Hi there! Today I am going to show you how we can use JavaScript and the browser local storage to go ahead and store data from our game to the browser. So local storage is a powerful feature of HTML5 that allows developers to store key value pairs in your browser, even after the browser is closed. And so this is a powerful feature that allows you to introduce simple uh, data persistence to your game with very little effort. And so this is ideal for saving like things for game progress. If it's a single player game, uh, high scores, if it's a local game or even game settings. So then that way, when players come back to your game, we can reload that data and put them back in the state they were in uh, when they left the game. And so as an example, I have a basic leaderboard here where it's simulating that we have three players and they have some high scores and they have these buttons that when players play our game, they would put it in their name and they would have a new high score and it would update the leaderboard with that new uh, score in that person's name. The downside of this is my game is all local in the state and nothing is persisted anywhere. So if the player refreshes the page or they leave and come back, the state is reset and so that high score data is lost. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and use local storage to persist the data to the browser and then that way we have that persistence. So to get started, I'm going to go ahead and jump over to our code and we're just going to go ahead and do a high level uh, review. Uh, so in the description of the video, there'll be a link to the starter code if you want to follow along. So at a high level in our code, it's a very basic HTML page. We have some simple CSS for styling our buttons and for positioning our canvas in the center of our page. We have a very basic div that is just the container that holds our canvas element as well as the div container for our buttons. From there, we have some very basic JavaScript to create a scores array that holds objects that have a player's name, score. And then we're using HTML canvas and JavaScript to go ahead and create our leaderboard. Uh, so we won't dive into this too much, but basically we're just grabbing the canvas, we're drawing our elements, and then we're drawing the scores on top of that. And for our scores, we've wrapped this in a function. So then that way we can repeatedly call this to update our scores as things change. And then finally, we have an update scores function that is invoked when we click one of these buttons. All right, so to get started with the code, the first thing we want to do is check to make sure we can actually use local storage from the browser. And so to see if a browser supports it, an easy way method we can do is we can see if the window global object has the local storage object on it. And if it's not null, then we can actually use the local storage. So what we're going to do is we're going to come below the update scores function here. And we're just going to add a simple check. We're going to do if local storage is available, then we have access to the object. So then what we'd want to do is when our game first loads, we'd want to go ahead and check to see if we have a safe state in the local storage. And we can pull items from our key value pair. And so we can pull keys from our object by using the get item method on local storage. So what we're going to do is we're just going to make a new variable. We're going to call this save scores. And what we'll do is we'll do local storage dot get item. And this method expects a key, which will be a string. And so we're just going to call this high scores. And what we're going to do is we're just going to add a simple console log. So we'll do console dot log and we'll do save scores. The other thing we're going to do is we're just going to add an if statement. And if local storage is not available, we're going to go ahead and log a, uh, a message. So we'll do else we'll do console log. Local storage is not supported. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and save. We'll come back to our browser real quick. Let's go ahead and open up our developer console. And then what we'll see is right after the page loads, we see null inside our console. So what's happening here is we grab our local storage and because this key does not exist, we get null back for our value. So now that we know how to get items, the next thing we need to do is actually go ahead and store data in the browser. And we can do this by using the set item method on local storage. So for our example, what we're going to do is we're going to come into our update scores function here. And so after we update our scores, we're going to go ahead and save that data to the browser. So we're going to do if local storage, then we'll do local storage dot set item. And then this expects uh, two values, the key that the data will be stored into and then the actual value. So one thing to note with the uh, 
local storage is you can only store uh, strings. And so any other complex uh, data types, we'll have to convert them to strings and store them in there. And so currently our high scores is an array of objects. So we'll need to go ahead and stringify this so we can go ahead and store that properly. So what we'll do is we're going to use the same uh, key. So we have high scores. And then we're just going to do json.stringify, and we're going to do our scores. All right, so then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and save. If we just go ahead and click one of our buttons, in theory, local storage should be updated. And so if we go ahead and refresh, we'll see right away when our page loads, we grab our new high scores data that we stored, and now we have this JSON stringified version of our scores. So the last thing we need to do to hook everything up is we just need to go ahead and parse this data and then repopulate our data. So what we'll do is we're just going to add an if statement here, and if save scores was found, then what we'll do is we're just going to do scores equals json.parse, and we'll do our save scores. So then we'll go ahead and save, and we'll see now when our game refreshes, we have Jane, it has 400, and if we add Terry and Joe, we have 600, 500, 400. If we refresh, our scores stay the same. All right, with that, we have our very basic implementation uh, done. So as you can see, local storage is a very powerful feature that allows us to save data, um, such as like our game progress or high scores to our browser, and it's really easy to use. So by using that local storage object and by using those simple methods we can easily save and load data. So there are a few limitations um, with local storage. Uh, one of them as an example is we can only store strings. So for any other data type we'll have to convert it to a string and then reparse that type out when we need to use that. So for complex object we might need a way to parse this data and know how to handle it appropriately. Another thing to know is there is a limit for how much data you can store for each domain. So when you store data in your web application, it's always stored to the domain that the web page is running on. And then that way, your data is only accessible by your website. But one thing to note, this is not a secure mechanism. So you do not want to store uh, sensitive data in here because anyone can go into the browser and view the data that's stored in your local storage. So as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. Um, as a reminder, there will be links in the description to this completed source code. And if you're interested in more JavaScript game development, check out some of the links that are on your screen now.